So welcome everyone to our video lecture for module 4. Uh, sorry kung medyo na late yung pag uh, upload ko ng video lecture for module 4 but I'll try to have just two video lectures for uh, this session. And um, uh, I also feel quite guilty <laughs> na halos dumaan yung buong uh, semester that the setup is like this. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry because um, my my schedule is quite conflict with the class. But uh, again, as promised, I'll try my best to uh, upload video lectures, um, attend to your concerns, and again, if you have questions or anything, please please chat me or send me a message in our Google Classroom or in Facebook and I'm, I'm happy to help you with, with that. So, anyway, uh, Module 4 for our Prof. Ed 6, Andragogy of Learning. Magpo-focus na tayo sa Trainer's Methodology 1. But the discussion is more of planning training session. Okay. So hindi na hindi ko ibibigay sa inyo lahat ng uh, TM1. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access with the uh, complete modules with the complete um, discussion, the curriculum. However, at least with this one you have already a heads up of what is TM1. So I hope uh, you'll take down notes, you'll uh, watch and listen carefully because this is very useful in our field as a TLE majors or BTVTED majors um, importante sa, sa strand natin or sa area natin ang trainers methodology one so this this is more of like a, a heads up and now that we know the the theories the strategies and so on in teaching adults now let's have tm1 kasi ang tm1 eh um nc holders you know, being trained to become trainers so sila na ang mag mag assess mag evaluate gagawa ng uh, training sessions and so on first uh, ter some terminologies in TM1 or that we can use in uh, the discussion. So, trainer, this is a person who enables group of learners to develop competencies toward performing a particular trade or technical work while an assessor is an individual accredited and authorized to evaluate or assess competencies of a candidate applying for certification or any one of the purpose of assessment. And if you have your NC, laging iba si train, trainer and assessor kasi yung iba din medyo, medyo bias eh. Baka si kung ang mangyayari kasi si uh, trainer ay also si assessor Actually, bakit bakit mo pa assess eh, you know already the the uh, progress of that student or of that learner. So, automatic uh pwede mo na siyang ipasa. And pwede rin naman na may bias on the side of of the trainer or the or the training process. So that's why it would be better if there is another person to assess or evaluate the competency of that learner. So, a trainer or an assessor is at least NC2 holder and who has achieved all the required units of competency identified in TM Level 1 under the PTTQF. He is also a holder of National Tibet Trainer Certificate Level 1. So, for for our situation, if uh, ayaw natin magturo sa, sa public, actually even sa public eh, uh, may, may times na if you want to get a promotion in TLE or TechVox strand, kailangan meron kang uh, TM or NTTC. So, yan ang mga requirements nila for promotion in the TechVox. Sa uh, kung sa 
test the training centers din naman kung gusto mo maging trainer or assessor kailangan meron kang meron ka nito so bukod sa NC mo these two certifications are required so, TVET Trainer is a professional who enables a learner or a group of learners to develop competencies to performing a particular trade or technical work. Towards this end, a TVET Trainer may assume various roles such as training facilitator, competency assessor, training designer, developer, or training supervisor one. Actually, uh, as mentioned nga, you can be a trainer and you can also be an assessor. But, um, if, let's say, you are conducting a training session in uh, cookery for this class, yung, yung class mo yun, hindi pwedeng ikaw na yung mag, mag certify then or mag assess. Usually, there's another person to do the assessment. And same goes with with you. Um, kahit na nagte-training ka sa klase na to, but if you want to if you are chosen to to assess a class, so a different class or a different institution, hindi pwede yung yung tinuturuan mo din. Another is uh, the trainer's methodology level 1 consists of competencies a TVET trainer or assessor must achieve, such as plan training session, so yun ang ifo-focus natin. But for the rest, like facilitate learning sessions, supervise, work-based learning, conduct competency assessment, maintain training facilities, and utilize electronic media in facilitating in facilitating, sorry, training, uh, I have posted materials of this in our Google Classroom para pag nag-take kayo ng TM1, uh, magagamit nyo yun as your uh, base or reference para makapasa din kayo sa uh, training na to. So, for you to qualify for this course in the TM1, ha? so a candidate or trainee must satisfy the following requirements. So, you should have a graduate of baccalaureate degree or equivalent in training or experience along the field of technical vocational education and training. So, very much aligned to sa, sa curriculum natin. You should also be a certified at the same at the same or higher NC level the qualification that will be handled for technical for technical trainers. Usually, um, I mean, sa mga nakikita kong post when they are looking for for uh, applicants here, kahit NC two level, mas a minimum or at least NC two level, it's fine with them. They they let you. Uh, attend or enroll in TM1 sessions. And able to communicate orally in writing, orally and in writing, I mean, physically fit and mentally healthy, proficient in quantitative and qualitative analysis, and proficient in verbal reasoning. So, if you want to uh, take this now, pwede, pwede. Okay? Mas, mas beneficial to sa uh, course natin sa program natin because we are in the tech book eh, or TLE and most of the um, the courses or areas in TL, TLE are for TESTA, aligned in TESTA so mas maganda kahit siguro after college take this so that you can have extra uh, besides the qualification, extra income then I know someone na nagtuturo sa, sa public school, high school, then, every weekends, nagtitrain siya ng mga gustong mag, magkaroon ng NC besides his, his students. So, much better kasi may extra pa siya. So, pwede nyo rin gawin yung ganun. So, nagtitrain siya on the side and still have a full-time job. So just to introduce some basic terminologies. So again, when we re when we say knowledge, this is the cognitive representation of ideas, events, activities or tasks derived from practical or professional experience as well as from formal instruction or study. 
while skill refers to the acquired and practice ability to carry out a task or job. Uh, another keyword for skill is ability. Okay. Then competency as used in TESTA. This is the application of knowledge, skill, and attitude required to complete a work activity to the standard expected in the workplace. Or it's also the possession and application of knowledge, skills, and attitudes to the standard or of performance required in the workplace. So competency, uh, lagi natin itong ginagamit sa, sa certain fields. So, diba, lagi natin naririnig, uh, a teacher should be competent enough to do this and that. Uh, an attorney should be competent in the following. Meaning, itong mga knowledge, skills, and attitude na required sa isang uh, profession, kailangan kaya nilang gawin. Okay? They can comply with, with those requirements. Next is we have the four dimensions of competency that describes aspect of work performance. So these four dimensions, it's required in TM1 because this will uh, determine if you are ready enough to conduct training sessions in your with your students. So first is task skills. So undertaking a specific workplace task, then task management skills. So siyempre for uh, task skills, if you can do that task, then if you can manage to do those tasks, those several different tasks, so for, for instance, in um, electricity or electronics, uh, for those kind of trainings, hindi lang naman yan nakafocus sa uh, isang task but different ones. And can you complete it in an entire work activity? Next is the contingency management skills. So, responding to problems, irregularities, and breakdown in routine when undertaking the work activity. Um, unlike high school students, or elementary students, uh, we we don't necessarily ask them to do tasks that are very risky, since well they are young. However, for uh, test the courses, since the uh, the competencies here, the certifications require. Um, lifting of, of this heavy objects, uh, thermal application, or um, uh, needs to deal with fire, with, for instance, welding, uh, with knives, with dangerous objects. So, since adults naman ang mga uh, students in these courses, so when there are problems encountered, some uh, issues how do how can we manage it as uh, trainers or assessors and also the job role environment skills dealing with responsibilities and expectations of the work environment when undertaking a work activity so with the working environment or learning environment for uh, basic education we also should know how to take care of the different tools how to set up the uh, the classroom for the students or learners to do a certain task effectively in yun nga pabalik tayo sa safety sa safety also ng mga students so sa, to, to become a competent tm or trainer uh, under tm1 Ito yung uh, overall or general dimensions that we look at. So again, uh, basic terminologies in terms of uh, in, in this module. First is competency standard. Our industry determined specification of competencies required for 
effective work performance, they are expressed as outcomes and they focus on workplace activity rather than training or personal attributes and capture the ability to apply skills in new situations and changing work organization. In short, these competencies are what the what the industry they want the students want to uh, enroll in. So, kung sa, sa baking, sa bread and pastry, sa cookery, hindi lang yan simple measurements or knife, knife skills, but also sanitation um, or, or OHS uh, and, and different aspects because that is the requirement of the industry. So, there are so many things that we need also to consider uh, on what's happening in the different fields. Hindi dapat naka, uh, naka confine lang with just the curriculum, but also, again, the industry. Because learners enrolled in these um, courses because for job purposes so that they can land in uh, in a company next is recognition of prior learning or the rpl this is the acknowledgement of an individual skills knowledge and attitudes gained from life and work experiences outside registered training programs um there's a form in in tesda or once you are enrolling in a certain test the course asking what are the skills or the the competencies that this learner think he or she uh, can do so kailangan as uh, trainers and well almost all of the teachers should know if uh, the the learners, the students, have these prerequisite skills before going to or entering this course. As we all know, um, itong mga test the courses, it's, it has level. So, you cannot move to a certain level unless uh, you're, you are very uh, knowledgeable about it. Kasi mahirap then mag progress in the next level without going to the uh, the, the prerequisite level since the assessment in uh, test the courses are more of performance demonstration or output you need to to present something and syempre if you don't know the basic and um, it's a prerequisite of the complex one. So, how can you produce an output? Then, qualification. It's cluster of units of competency that meets job roles and is significant in the workplace. It is also a cer certification awarded to a person on successful completion of a course and or uh, in recognition of having demonstrated competencies relevant to an industry. What is good about uh, test the courses or certification is it's um, internationally known. Kahit uh, magtrabaho ka abroad and you present your uh, test the course, it's uh, accredited in, in their countries or in their work. Unlike some online courses nowadays, which is still not that uh, acceptable, though it's it's a good uh, online training, especially for those who are very busy. But uh, for this one, for Tesla, um, it's it's accredited. So when we say you are uh, you have an NC three qualification. In, uh, in in this course, uh, medyo magiging madali ang pagland mo with with these jobs. And of course, what more? If besides that you have the NC, you uh, reach the highest level of that course, tapos mag TTM1 ka pa, 
and also the the exam for assessor. So mas mas maganda yung qualifications mo. So three components of qualification. First is the basic competency, skills and knowledge that everyone needs for work. Um, in in some uh, courses, if you will take a look at the, the different courses in in Testa, medyo magkakaparehas din tong basic competency because again, from the term itself, you know, basic kailangan. Uh, this is innate and hindi pwedeng ma-disregard ng learner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next is the common competencies, so skills and knowledge needed by people working in a particular industry. So, if you compare this, compare the different courses, dito na nagkakaiba. So, depende sa um, requirement ng industry, ng, ng course that the learner wants to enroll. So, iba-iba yan. And the core competency, specific skills and knowledge needed in, in a particular area of work, industry, sector, occupation, or job role. So the, the core competency, uh, these are the, the most important ones or the important competencies in uh, at the course. So if, if let's say bookkeeping, the Definitely, the core competencies are more of um, uh, preparing financial statements. So, yun ang uh, core competency. So, these basic competencies, this is for TM1. Ito ang mga kailangan yung um, ma ma target or ma apply and also ma master if you want to pursue TM1 or you want to become a trainer you should first lead workplace communication apply math and science principles in technical training well as as we all know uh, pag sinabi kasi nating techvoc or TLE it's really the application of many knowledge many um, fields in in the academe. Kaya meron tayong, for example, sa electricity or electronics, we have math and physics. Uh, even in cooking, in uh, baking, we, we also incorporate math with the right temperature and uh, the measurements. And uh, I think na discuss naman natin sa um, food processing na uh, there's there's really science behind food, science and math. We just don't focus on the math, but uh, in terms of the processing of foods, definitely meron ding um, uh, a touch of of math application so that we can preserve the foods or process the foods properly. Okay, next is um, apply environmental principles and advocate conservation. Utilize IT applications in technical training. Lead small teams. Um, from my observation, many of the students, especially teachers, newly teachers, newly uh, professionals, uh, ito yung kailangan din nating master. Although, if you will be a high school teacher, baka mas madali. However, for um, to become a trainer in, uh, an, in TESDA, you're dealing with adults and definitely those adults might be older than you. So, medyo mahirap din silang uh, elite or turuan. Next is apply work ethics, values, and quality principles. Work effectively in vocational education and training. Foster and promote a learning culture. Ensure a healthy and safe learning environment. Maintain and enhance professional practice. Develop and promote appreciation for cost benefits of technical training. And develop and promote global understanding of labor market. So this one, 
this is just for TM1. Uh, iba, iba pa yung uh, for NC level. So, ito yung mga kailangan yung ma-master for you to uh, pass the TM1 certification or qualification. For the core competencies naman, TM1 still, so you should uh, know how to plan training sessions. So for our module, ito lang ang focus natin since uh, unfortunately, we cannot focus on this. We cannot uh, act on it. Okay, but Again, if you check my, my post, there are materials for these core competencies. And if you want to pursue a TM1 qualification, at least you have already a background, you have resources to prepare for that. So when we say competency-based training or CBT, this is what is followed by uh, TESDA. So this is a system by which the student is trained on the basis of demonstrated ability rather than on that of elapsed time. Um, when we say elapsed time like in, in, uh, in, in our college or high school na uh, the long, there, there's this long period of of time and, and schedule for you to study a specific course. However, for uh, test the training, kung mapapansin natin in just weeks, we're done with the uh, training. We can be assessed right away uh, some. Though in culinary, merong mga nag-offer ng years. But uh, Bachelor's degree na din. So, bachelor's and also the uh, NC certification. So, it's more of like a dual certification. Well, a diploma. So, competency-based curriculum is the specification for a course or subject module which, which describes all the learning experience a student or learner undergoes. It specifies outcomes which are consistent with the requirements of the workplace as agreed through industry or community. So this competency-based curriculum, you can find this um, in the TESDA the website or if you look it up on Google, marami kayo makikita ganito for each uh, courses. It specifies all uh, the basic competencies, the core competencies, the common competencies in each course. For the competency-based learning material naman, this refers to the print and non-print instructional media used as guide in learning workplace activities. So as trainers, dapat merong, merong copy nito. But definitely, uh, your your trainers in the future, if you want to have uh, TM1, will will give you a copy of this, and uh, you should have a copy of this uh, whatever specialization you want to to focus on when you become uh, a trainer. So competency based training or CBT. We have the, the focus of this is skills development, so focuses on uh, skills development. Next, the competency-based training of TESDA is also student-centered. So learners control and manipulate the tools and equipments with the guide of a teacher. That's why sa, um, in, in our previous topics, we always discuss that Pedagogy and andragogy is different from one another. Um, we we teach adults in a different way, and well, based on our experience, because we are already adults, so we know how we will learn, how we want to learn. That's why it's it's more of student centered, and see, see, teacher will just. Uh, or instructor 
or professor or trainer will serve as uh, a facilitator in the class. So, facilitating lang ng, ng, ng students if they have inquiries. So, you can go to your instructor or trainer. And it focuses on process and the product. So, focus is on the process and outcome outcome or end product. For instance, cooking, uh, cookery, baking. So, besides the process, also, actually also the end product. Um, in computer servicing, more of the, the process also. Eh. Siyempre, hindi naman uh, gagana ang isang uh, CP or computer. Let's say, if the process is uh, correct, na dapat gumana siya kung talagang correct. So, pag hindi gumana, it means there's something wrong with the process. So, in addition to that, learners are not compared among each other. Instead, their skills are compared against the norms or standards set by the industry. So, dito walang, you know, like in high school na siya ang top one, siya ang valedictorian, and so on. But, um, the the trainer okay, or the instructor will always you as a future trainer you should compare if the skills that they are demonstrating is this the the standard of the industry uh mamaya nag nagluluto pala yung yung student na to or the your learner but he or she is not um, following proper handling of foods, proper storage, the, the hygiene, the sanitation, and so on. So, even though the food is delicious, it looks great, the plating and all, but kung hindi ito yung standard of, of the different industries, well, that student might fail. So, the training is also self-paced. An example of this is when the trainer allows the student to study the material and practice the skill on their own. That's why um, for, for this kind of learning setup, uh, I, I believe that it's um, quite helpful for college students also yung yung online learning or the self-paced learning because you can you're already adults and you you can understand uh, quickly you can work on your own with the different uh, activities so the si teacher talaga magiging facilitator lang and that's why there's uh, reporting in class group works uh, researches because as adults uh, we we don't want to always be spoon fed or nag about what we should do dahil meron na tayong sariling isip and um, we can understand things already that's why if uh, for certain circumstances hindi kaya ng face to face so, we can do online learning. And actually, uh, TESDA already has an online platform where you can um, read the, the contents, the first few uh, contents of the course. And I, I believe that at the end of the, uh, the online training session, you'll have a certificate of competency. So, it's just COC, but at least if you want to move to NC, uh, may idea ka na or mas madali na lang sa'yo and even TM1, actually I, I got this from their online website so you can check their online website and review uh, this online session in TESTA so this is the um, the flow chart okay, of how competency based training is how it flows, how it's, it's being done, kailan mo masasabing baksak si student, kailan mo masasabing pasado siya, kailan siya uh, magre-re-attempt. So, it starts with student enters program, 
Then, syempre, the orientation, role of the, role of the trainer, trainee, um, more of introducing the, the subject and yourself as a trainer. Then, student selects competency and receives instruction. So, once the student knows uh, ano ba ang gusto niyang itake in your uh, training center. So, ito na ang gagawin niya. Review learning package, view multimedia materials, use manuals, observe demonstration, practice skills in workshop, then uh, receive assistance and advice. Okay? So, once all of these are done, so we'll move to this one. So, um, instructor observes performance, pwedeng student attempts task. Pag nagawa naman yung performance, uh, instructor rates performance and also the student. Okay, so it's uh, a cooperation between the instructor and the student. If the student uh, satisfactorily perform competency, if yes, have enough competency been achieved, yes, pwede na mag-exit. But if dito pa lang, uh, kulang pa sa, uh, hindi niya na pa sa yung, comp excuse me, yung competency required for that certain course. So, since no, balik ulit siya dito. Then, repeat the process until that student or learner um, have enough competency for that course, have achieved the required competency. Ayun nga lang, if hindi pa din, so definitely, student should go back to step 2. Uh, baka uh, may naskipan si, si student na, na level, hindi niya na take yung prerequisite or nakalusot lang. Kaya, uh, hindi niya maintindihan yung complex uh, parts. And uh, by the way, this is your your final exam or project. So, I'm expecting that you also have uh, this kind of flowchart. However, please uh, be more realistic and um, ano ba? Uh, improve. Probably, you can improve this diagram based on your own preference. How, how you can ensure that the uh, learner will um, exit the program with, you know, a certification or an NC from your, uh, under your care. So, in the next slide, uh, there's a video presentation from TESDA explaining the competency-based training. <laughs> Trainers Methodology 1 Deliver Competency-Based Training Trainee enters the program. For demonstration purposes, we will be using the qualification Housekeeping NC2. The trainer orients the class. The orientation includes briefing on the units of competencies to be completed in the training, as well as the job role and job description. They will attain once past the national assessment, followed by administering recognition of prior learning or RPL, which credits life and job experiences as valid evidence and will no longer be included in the training program. Trainee selects competency from the identified training needs and receives instruction from the trainer. The trainer administers learning contract or agreement between him and his trainees, then provides CBLM materials and introduces the use of progress and achievement chart. With the selected competency, the trainee studies the module by doing the following learning activities. Review learning package, view multimedia materials, 
use manuals, observe demonstration, practice skills in workshop, and receive assistance and advice. While the trainee practices the skill, the trainer observes and records the performance on the progress chart. The trainee will attempt the task until he masters the skill with the help of trainer's immediate and constructive feedback. Once the trainee determines by himself that he is competent to do the skill, he will call the attention of trainer. The trainer will observe and rate the performance based on the performance criteria checklist and will record the result on the achievement chart. If the skill is not satisfactorily performed, the trainee will study again the module. If he is satisfactory performed the task, the trainer will assess if he has enough units of competency. The student with enough units of competency can exit the program. If the trainee doesn't have enough units of competencies, he will then select another unit of competency and repeat the competency-based training process. Trainer's Methodology 1 Competency-based training is anchored on the ground rules that the student and teacher needs to follow. It is referred to as the 10 Principles of CBT. Principle number 1 Our training is based on competency-based curriculum and the benchmark is set by the competency standards. Criteria for assessment and promotion are based on the standards set by the industry in competently performing a workplace function. Principle number two. Training design is done in small blocks called modules. Training design can address individual needs if modular approach is applied. Principle number three. Trainees can study the materials on their own at their own pace. Self-paced approach can be applied, giving the learner leeway to focus and learn a particular activity according to the phase of their comfort. Principle number four. Our activities are based from actual work practice. Graduates of this training are job ready, requiring no or minimal training to become productive in work. Principle number five. Materials used by trainees are in line with the curriculum and competency standards. Principle number six. We assess every student based on the evidences gathered from their performance. Note that these evidences should meet the standards required by the industry. Principle number seven. Training activities is either done in an actual workplace or in a simulation of a workplace setting. Principle number eight. The training system acknowledges students' previous and current competencies that they have acquired through trainings, seminars, and job experiences. Learning from experience and non-formal training is part of prior learning that is recognized and credited, giving the learner an option to proceed to a more advanced module. Principle number nine. Students are allowed to enter and exit the training program as a result of recognition of prior learning. And lastly, principle number 10. Training programs offered by each training institutions or centers are scrutinized by industry experts and are registered with UTPRAS. So from the previous slide, you've watched already the uh, the 10 principles of competency based training. So, i review lang ulit natin tong 10 principles na to. So, principle 1, the training is based on curriculum or the CBC. As mentioned, the, the CBC 
the competency-based uh, curriculum, all of the competency standards required for someone to, to pass the certification and for him or her to be uh, qualified in uh, a certain job or work. Nandiyan nakasulat. Naka okay, then principle two, learning is competency-based or modular in structure. As long as you you can demonstrate, you can perform this certain uh, skill, so you could. So dito, uh, as I think you know it very well, that we don't just um, uh, depend on what the students know. If they can explain it well, okay. Um, so can you can you do it? So, don't tayo nagre-rely if the student can do it, can demonstrate it. Or pwede ring, uh, modular approach. Modular but still the assessment would be demonstrate it. Principle 3, training delivery is individualized and self-paced. Principle 4, training is based on work that must be uh, performed. Five training materials are, are directly related to the competency standards and the curriculum modules. Six assessment is based on the collection of pieces of evidence of the performance of work to the industry required standard. So for this again, um, the the curriculum is always based on what is the the required standard outside or in the industry. And it should always be updated. So, yung mga curriculum na yan, uh, ina-update din naman. Seven, training is based both on and of the job components. The system allows recognition of prior learning and or current competencies. And nine, training allows multiple entries and exit in the training program. So, for syempre, uh, as, as teachers, we always give chances, we help our learners or our students. That's why there, the, with the flowchart, you know, uh, there are options of what if a student failed first step pa lang or first assessment pa lang. So at least the student can go back and siguro pag second or third time na he or she can master the, the different competencies. Then, approved training programs are nationally accredited. Programs of each institution or training center are registered with UTPRAS or Unified Tibet Program Registration and Accreditation System. So, again, with, with these training programs, is it's accredited. So, we can use it if we want to be employed in this certain industry as long as we comply with the the competency requirement or the qualifications of this course. So, understanding adult learners. Uh, medyo pa ulit-ulit na tayo dito in the, in the past uh, discussions. So, as trainers, since uh, this is learner-centered, you should know them first. You should know what's their background, what their um, background in terms of work, uh, even their family, if they're married, single, or they have children. Because it's, it's a big factor. It's a big motivation for them. Um, their their bachelor's degree also, so we it's it's much better to know this para malaman natin kung ano yung uh, how will we strategize our training sessions with them and their culture. So not only because we need data for profiling purposes, but for us to use these data to analyze and determine their training needs, since. Uh, as we always discuss, if you know the training needs or the learning needs of your students, may uh, it be adults or, or preschoolers or high schools or teenagers, it will help us to uh, design a learning instruction 
and even the instructional materials, techniques, teaching techniques, methods, and so on, in a way that will help our students to uh, reach the complex levels or uh, for them to develop okay, with, with the knowledge and skills. So understanding how adults learn will also enable the trainer to think of teaching strategies that focus on adults. So again, that's why we have this course. That is what we call Andragogy. So below are uh, the following adult learner characteristics. Uh, hindi na natin yan isa-isahin because we have discussed that. I think um, module 2 with the different theories. Identifying learners' training requirements. Establishing trainees' characteristics. The characteristics that would help a trainer plan effective session plan are language, literacy, and numeracy level. It helps a trainer in choosing training methods, activities, and tasks suitable for each session. Cultural and language background. It affirms diverse classrooms. Awareness of such enables the trainer to be responsive and sensitive to the variety of cultures and language. Education and general knowledge. It helps the trainer adjust the level to pitch delivery of each session. Trainee's gender. It somehow influences the trainer in assigning tasks or activities. Age. It helps the trainer determine the maturity level of the students. And learning style. It determines the way where students learn better and more quickly. These characteristics will serve as trainer's basis in planning individualized sessions. Identifying learners' training requirements Learning style Learning style refers to the way we recognize, organize, and store key information or simply means a way of learning. Examples of these are VART learning style model and PART learning styles. VART stands for visual, which learns best by seeing the whole picture. Auditory, which learns best by listening. Read, which learns best by reading text-based information. And kinesthetic learning style model, which learns best by moving or doing tasks. While PART stands for pragmatist, which always thinks of practical application of ideas. Activist, which likes to get things going to bring action to ideas. Reflector, which innovates ideas and clarifies values. And Theorist, which creates concepts and models as they think things through. We all learn differently, and determining one's learning style with the use of VARC and PART model would help us in planning the session and in choosing appropriate learning materials. So in addition to understanding our learners and um, in having uh, this, the self-assessment questionnaire, to which will still be answered uh, by, by uh, the learners or the students, you may have a copy of the VARC and the PART Learning Style Assessment Questionnaire. So with this, you can um, assess the students hindi na yung pa isa, -isa na i-observe mo muna, but through questionnaire, okay, to know what are, the, what are the skills that they have, what do they know, and from there, uh, yun nga, makakapagplano ka kung paano mo uh, magagawa yung uh, everyday lessons mo. 
So, VARC learning styles, as proposed by Fleming and Mills, this is a model that describes how a person takes in and gives out information while learning. So, these learning styles are visual, like learners can uh, learn best by seeing graphs, charts, symbols, images, and so on. Auditory, siyempre by listening. Read and write, when they are reading text-based information and writing it. And kinesthetic, or learning by doing. So use Spark Learning Style Self-Assessment Questionnaire as a tool in determining your Chinese learning styles. But, uh, however, note that a training can have one or more learning styles. So, some most students, they best learn by reading, writing, kinesthetic, or um, uh, auditory and uh, kinesthetic, for instance. Diba? As, as, uh, as mentioned in the uh, other uh, modules, um, it's it's better if there's a combination of different learning styles because they learn much better and and best. So for part learning style, so this is developed by Honey and Mumford, but it's from Kolb's learning style model. So the fur the four learning styles are pragmatism or putting theory into practice, or needs to know how to apply the information in real world. So, pragmatism ang uh, focus niya. Next is activist, having an experience or needs to do. So, activists put together experience and application as they perceive information concretely and process it actively. Next, reflectors or reflecting on it or needs needs time to think over information. Okay, and theorists, theorists, drawing out own conclusion or needs to know theory behind information. So these are the theories. So use part learning style questionnaire to find out your Chinese approach also to learning uh, with those four uh, principles of part the pragmatist or pragmatism activist then the reflectors and theories so you can scan the QR code so that you'll be redirected to the uh, material of these two self-assessment questionnaire so from the different questionnaires the, the VARC and the part um, we can conduct we should conduct a pre-training assessment. So this is conducted to recognize current competency and recognition of prior learning. So at least from there, from the pre-training assessment, besides the, uh, the questionnaires that we can distribute to our students, mas uh, makikita natin yung, yung clear picture of what they know and how we should um, plan on the things that they need to, to catch up or to improve. So this assessment is done before the training starts. Listed are reasons why it is needed. So first, it allows us to see their mastered competencies. It serves as a point of reference in assessing our trainees. And it gives students quick look at the future, uh, especially this one. I totally agree with this, the last one, because if from the start, the, the students know their uh, weakness, at least during the, the training process, um, they, they will know their, their areas for improvement. And at the end of the training session, uh, they na, na achieve na nila kung ano yung mga weaknesses na yun or things that they need to improve. So, uh, parang dito sa pre-training assessment, assessment na goal setting na tayo per student. So, that's uh, the overall aim of uh, this activity in our class. So, 
pre-training assessment can be done either of the following. Learners assess themselves using the self-assessment guide as presented in the previous slide. A trainer assess learner's previous experience through portfolio assessment. So we have also a portfolio um, uh, as a requirement for uh, some trainees. The trainer assess learners' skills and knowledge through pre-test or diagnostic tests. Dito pwedeng uh, written test then. Just to know what are the things that, you know, their, their strengths and weaknesses. So, uh, if you scan this QR code, this is a self-assessment uh, guide. It is a pre-assessment tool to help the candidate and assessor determine what evidence is available when gaps exist, including readiness for assessment. So, I suggest you you scan this. For the portfolio assessment naman, uh, this refers to the process of determining whether an applicant is uh, competent through evaluation of his or her records of achieve achievement. So, sa you know, second one, sa portfolio assessment, um, parang may, may resume si, si trainee together with his other qualifications, certifications, just for us to see, okay, ito na pala yung NC ni student, ito na yung mga awards niya in, in this industry. Okay, and uh, lastly, for you know, for the diagnostic test, we can have a pretest for us to know these things. So again, you may have the, the self-assessment guide uh, as, as your reference on how to do this. Identifying learners' training requirements Pre-training assessment Pre-training assessment is conducted to let the trainer see his student's mastered competency as it gives student a quick look on the succeeding lessons before the training starts. Self-assessment guide or SAG is a pre-assessment tool to help the candidate and assessor determine what evidence is available. Portfolio assessment is the evaluation of the applicant's employment record, seminars attended, and projects done. Pre-test or diagnostic test result is used to identify training needs or performance problems. This assessment is done prior to actual training program. So, from the, the previous slides, uh, understanding our learners, having pre-training assessments, so now, uh, with the right amount of information that we have gathered about the students or the learners, we can determine now the training gap. So under the CBT approach, each learner is assessed to find the gap between the skills they need and the skills that they already have. So the difference between those two is what we call the training gap. Training gap is also equivalent with learning needs or the training needs. So skills required refers to the competencies listed in the competency standards and specified by the industry. On the other hand, current skills referred to as validated competencies gathered in the pre-training assessment. So skills required, this is um, the, from the curriculum of TESDA and also from the industry. Current skills, kung anong meron si, si student. So, a training program is then developed to help the learner acquire the skill deficiency. Therefore, self-assessment guide with training needs analysis tool is an important tool to use in determining training gap. Uh, actually, sa, sa TM1 na training, ang um, training you know, mga trainers is more of the development of uh, training programs. So, 
tinitrain yung mga future trainers on how to determine these things, how to plan, how to uh, go about with uh, the different issues and problems, maintaining the, the working environment. So, it's more of like a, a complicated lesson planning. Kumbaga sa atin, ang complicated lesson planning na ay yung detailed one. But for them, it's the whole training session. Determining Training Gap Training gap refers to the difference between the required competencies listed in competency standards and the verified current competencies from the pre-training assessment. Self-assessment guide or SAG with training needs analysis or TNA tool is utilized by the trainer to determine training gap. To use this form, derive the evidence requirements from competency standards Trainee will self-assess his competency by checking the columns No, Some, and Extensive. Trainer validates the evidences by conducting a portfolio assessment. If there is no knowledge achieved in the evidence requirements or has some or extensive evidence requirements, but the evidence presented is not valid or not sufficient to support competency, then it will be considered as training gap or need. Note any recommendation if needed. So we have the training regulation. This is a test promulgated document that serves as basis for which the competency-based curriculum, instructional materials, and competency assessment tools are developed. This document represents specific qualification, how the competencies in this qualification can be gained, assessed, and be given recognition in detailed, uh, in, detailed in, in this document or the TR. So if you want to check the TR of all TESDA courses, you may scan the QR code. So sa training, training regulation uh, document na to, it has four sections. So section one is definition of qualification. So ano yung mga competencies, the uh, qualifications, the um, job titles that someone can can work to. Then section 2 would be competency standards. Gives the specifications of competencies required for effective work performance. Then training standard. So it contains information and requirements in designing training program for certain qualification. And national assessment and certification arrangement. So as future uh, trainers, this is very important. Um, ang, ang TM1 kasi, syempre, meron na kayong NC, you have reached the highest level, so the, the uh, goal now is how will you plan everything and apply those uh, the things that you've learned in teaching uh, trainees. So going back to this terminology, when we say competency standard, as used in TESTA, is industry determined specification of competencies required for effective work performance. They are expressed as outcomes and they focus on work, place activity rather than training or personal attributes and capture the ability to apply skills in new situations in changing work organization. So for this one, um, fix na yan. Hindi na natin pwedeng i-modify in accordance with this with the level of our student because it's what the uh, different industry uh, has set. 
uh, ito yung dapat masunod, dapat na requirement for a certain um, task or a certain position, a job role to be done. So, kailangan masunod talaga to. So, sa uh, competency standard, meron tayong unit of competency or unit title. This is a component of CS stating a specific key function or role in a particular job or occupation. So, ito yung uh, specific um, roles or functions in that certain uh, position or in that certification. Meron din tayong unit descriptor na ina-outline kung ano yung dapat gawin sa workplace. Meron ding elements these are the building blocks of a unit of competency. It describes outcome terms, functions that a person performs in the workplace. Meron din tayong performance criteria that is used for evaluation purposes. In the competency standard, we can also find uh, what we call the required knowledge. So it refers to the competency that involves in applying knowledge to perform work activities. So meaning, uh, para, tong, para tong, uh, yung basic competencies, no? yung mga um, basic knowledge that someone should know for that person to perform a certain task in that uh, course or training. So, it includes also specific knowledge that is essential to the performance of the competency. We also have the required skills. So, syempre, kung meron tayong required knowledge, which are, <coughs> excuse me, more of the, the theories, we also have the, the skills. So, a list of skills that the learners need to achieve to perform that is uh, part of the competency standard. We also have range of variables in the CS. It describes the circumstances or context in which the work is to be performed. Evidence guide. This is a component of the unit of comp competency that uh, defines or identifies the evidence required to determine if the learner is competent enough okay, or what are the competence of uh, the learners. So, para din tong uh, rubrics. So, those are the things that we need to know in CS. There are still a lot of things that we need to consider here, but uh, again, if you prefer to have TM1, um, I suggest uh, enroll and pursue that uh, certification because it's really helpful. So as mentioned previously, in TESTA, we have what we call competency-based curriculum or the CBC. So this framework or a guide for the subsequent detailed development of competencies, associated methodologies, training, and assessment resources. In short, with this document, you'll find um, the well from the term itself, the curriculum itself, and the specific topics, the competencies, methodologies, and so on, for you as a future trainer to conduct your classes. And definitely, iba iba to per. Uh, per course or per program. So the CBC specifies the outcomes which are consistent with the requirements of the workplace as agreed through the industry or community consultations. CBC can be developed immediately when competency standards exist. When competi competency standards do not exist, curriculum developers need to clearly clearly define the learning outcomes to be attained. The standard of performance required must be appropriate to industry and occupational needs through the industry enterprise or spe specified client group consultations. So the goal of TESDA is um, for students or for learners to be employed, 
to be competent enough to be employed, to be in a specific industry or field. Kaya ang uh, goal or competency the curriculum of TESTA is always aligned with what is needed in the workforce or in the different industries. So if you want to check the uh, programs, the courses with each, with its and each CBC, you may scan the QR code here and uh, sa test the website na access nyo lahat ng CBC na yun. So this is the competency-based curriculum. Uh, this is just a guide of the contents that we can see here. So again, competency-based curriculum, this is a framework or a guide for the subsequent detailed development of competencies, associated methodologies, uh, training, and assessment resources. So it looks like this. So it consists of course design and modules for of instruction. So course design serves as the blueprint and sets the structure in, deliver, in delivering the training program. Modules of instruction serves as the course outline and is derived outline uh, and is derived from sorry the course design. So and contains detailed information on what and how to teach unit each unit of competency. So some modules of instruction actually as a document na to, you'll very much be guided as a trainer of the topics, how you should conduct it. Uh, mag, kung gusto mo nalang palawakin or dagdagan pa ng information, it's, it's fine. But the, the basic knowledge, the procedures in training, it's in this document. So it looks like this one. Kung makikita nyo, ayan yung course delivery, assessment methods, and trainer's qualification. So the module title, the learning outcome or the goal, and how many hours ang target natin. Okay, and that's the course design. So it's based on competency standards set by the industry or recognized industry sector. Learning system is, dri is driven by competencies written to the industry standards. So it contains this. So you have the course title. So sa example natin dito, it's for TM1. Nominal duration, this is how many hours or the estimated, estimated training period. Course description, so brief statement of scope, coverage, and the elimination of the course and entry requirements. Course structure, this is a core matrix and include details on module title, learning outcomes, and nominal hours per unit of competency. So, see, uh, this one, see course design, it's more of a general uh, information about the course, while this one is per competency and it's quite specific already. So, unit of competency is a component of the competency standard stating a specific key function or role in a particular job or occupation or occupation serving as a basis for training. So unit of competency, ito na yung uh, naka-specify naka na dito yung mga competencies required. So again, it's more specific already. Module title, okay, learning outcome, and nominal hours. So it should look like this. Resources is the part where recommended tools, equipment, and materials to be used are listed. Assessment methods. So how would you assess and evaluate your students? Collect evidence if they are competent enough. Then course delivery refers to the classroom teaching methodologies that can be applied for the entire module instruction. 
And trainer's qualification refers to the identified minimum experience and competencies the trainer for the course must possess. For example, this one, kailangan TQ2 certificate holder. Uh, okay, dapat PRC license and so on. So module of instruction, this is the, in, the description of training requirements for every unit of competency. So ito, per unit of competency na yung explanation, it's uh, definitely different from the curriculum design. Okay, so it contains the following, unit title, module title, module descriptor, and the normal dur duration. Then, summary of learning outcomes. Assessment criteria is the standards used to guide learning and to assess learner achievement and or to evaluate and certify competence. All the contents, these are the topics and activities which make up what is learned by an individual or group of learners during a learning process? So it's still part of uh, this one. It's a continuation actually of module of instruction. Okay, moving forward. We also have the condition. This is the situation and context under which learners will be assessed. Methodologies, teaching methodologies and assessment method and that's it so again this is the competency-based curriculum you'll find the necessary uh, topics guideline methods tools everything before you start with your training session so it would be better if you scan this first before uh, teaching your your students or training them kasi dito nakalahat naka lahat, lahat it's more of a, a general guide for you but for the specific materials there are times that they give specific materials from des testa and also on your part as a trainer um search for more resources Kasi baka may bagong inventions or innovations in that certain industry. So, you, you can update your learners about it. So, now let's proceed to the session plan. So, session plan, same as training plan or lesson plan. This is a written document prepared by the trainer that shows logical order of activities that he wants to happen in a training session. It gives a trainer and his learners an overview on where they are and where they are going. It serves as record of training sessions and as a starting point for additional training. It is also extremely helpful for a trainer who takes over another session. Siyempre, pag meron kang session plan, um, madali mong matrack eh kung ano na yung next step, kung ano na yung topic for today, uh, ano na yung mga activities na prepared kesa sa on the spot ka mag the training, right? And if ever uh, you need to uh, do certain things and you need to leave the class for the meantime, so pwede mo rin siyang ipasa sa uh, ibang trainers so that they can also uh, continue where you stop. So, an organized training session is the key to meaningful learning. Thus, a prepared session plan is needed to make every lesson a success. So, each session plan is derived on the CBC and anchored on competency standards to ensure that the training provided is world-class, high-quality skills education. So, when you prepare session plan, still, babasi tayo kay CBC. We need to review kung ano man yung uh, program or course na uh, gagawa natin ang session plan or we are the trainers. So, for you to have a copy of the session plan, I suggest you scan the QR code and you'll be redirected to this document. Have a copy of this so that in the future, if you want to pursue 
the TM1 and other qualifications in TESTA, ayan, it's uh, very helpful. Preparing Session Plan Derive Learning Outcomes Learning outcomes refers to the expected knowledge, skills, and competencies an individual acquires as the result of learning process. In writing learning outcome, the trainer infer it from the module of instruction, which is derived from the course design. that are all anchored from the competency standards. As a whole, each unit of competency has numerous learning outcomes, and every outcome has its own learning activities. So in the previous slide, we have already seen this na nasa uh, different documents, so, siya nasa CBC, nasa um, instruction, and so on. So, ano nga ba ulit to? The learning outcome is the set of knowledge, skills, and or competencies an individual has acquired and or is able to demonstrate after completion of a learning process, either formal or non-formal or informal. In short, sa, kung sa lesson plan, ito yung ating, <coughs> excuse me, objectives or learning objectives. So, it's lifted from the module of instruction. Uh, if you have remembered the table um, with specific uh, competencies, right? And uh, the learning outcome, the denomination, and so on. So, you can see this there. Derived from the course design, which are all anchored from the competency standards. We could infer that each unit of competency has numerous learning outcomes, which is true. Because uh, in a certain competency naman, required competency, hindi lang naman yan to uh, perform or to demonstrate this specific skill. Definitely, may iba pa yang uh, gustong ma-achieve from that. Uh, competency. May it be uh, to know how to uh, do this uh, orally, you know, speak in, in English, uh, teamwork, or occupational health and safety, something like that. And every outcome has its own learning activities. So, learning content refers to the topics and activities which make up what is learned by an individual or group of learners during a learning process. So, learning content, mga specific topics, activities na to. That's it. That's uh, our guide. So, listed are guidelines in determining and organizing course content. So, you should review first the CBC and determine essential topics and activities. Pwede mo rin namang i-modify ng kaunti yung, yung CBC. However, do not remove the certain competencies. Pwede mong i-rearrange or i-improve on your own in your class. But definitely, changing it totally or removing some things, it's, it's uh, disregarded. Review required knowledge or skills and range of variables from the competency standards. List the content or topics gathered from CBC and CS. Include additional topics if necessary. Organize the content. This will help learners store information in their long-term memory. Sort content or topics according to simple to complex task, known to unknown, whole to part, and back to whole concrete to abstract. So, just organize it. Again, you can modify it. If you think that uh, most of your students eh, magaling na pala sa ganitong competency, so, bakit mo pa uh, babalikan? So, pwedeng magpa-pre-assessment ka na lang doon, no? Or, if you think most of your students doesn't know this, which is a prerequisite before entering this class, so, maybe you can add that. 
uh, whatever um, you think is it's much better or will make the class um, achieve the goal in this period of time, then go for it. So sorting the content will help learners uh, do this in a much better way and mas mapapadali yung buhay mo as a trainer. Imagine, no? Uh, if, you, if you don't plan or organize everything according to your learner's needs also, hindi lang sa CBC, eh. Yung kung, kung nasa na ang students mo ngayon, kung ano na yung kakayahan nila, uh, mag chaos. Baka hindi pa nila mapasa yung, yung assessment afterwards. So, identify appropriate training methodology and techniques. Training methodology, this is how you will teach the subject matter. How you are going to, ayan, to dealt with in a broad sense. Is it better to have just group discussion or group works, role playing, demonstration, or most of the time, ang ginagawa natin ay mix, right? There's lecture. After lecture, discussion, after discussion, a demonstration, then assessment or examination. So while techniques are the variation of the method, so under small group discussion, the methods could be fishbowl, brainstorming, plenary, and so on. So to, uh, to select appropriate teaching method, a trainer should consider the following. Learning outcomes. Kung ang learning outcome mo eh for the student to demonstrate this and that, pero magpapa-lecture ka lang or mag-group work lang. So, how can they achieve that? Nature of the subject and types of performance specified. So, again, if it requires the student to demonstrate something, then there should be a repetition of that skill, an activity where you let them uh be exposed to that certain activity hanggang sa ma-master na nila. And at the end of the, the course, they can demonstrate it. So, na-achieve mo na yung goal. Needs, interests, abilities, and level of maturity. That's why we do pre-assessment training. Because again, we want to know first kung ano na yung alam ni student, kung anong level na sila, if they are really determined for this one, I, I guess they that's why they in, enrolled in this program because they are really determined, they are interested to know this. So with that information of the student, we can modify, we can uh, plan carefully ano yung, yung methodology and techniques na gagamitin natin sa klase natin. Available time and resources. Since uh, meron namang denomination, may hours of the training, so dapat align din doon. Kaya nga sa planning session, as a session plan, meron dyang time, merong hours of uh, gaano katagal yung activity na to, yung discussion, and so on. And also the capacity of the trainer. Hindi naman porket tayo ang trainer, tayo ang teacher, eh, kayang-kaya na natin lahat yan. So, still, we should also consider if we can do this. And again, if we cannot, do na papasok yung ating uh, skill in modifying, in designing our class in a way that all of us can do it. Okay? So, a trainer knows well that the single method will not be sufficient. So, the, the approach is... A skillful teacher must use various methods and techniques necessary to hold the attention of adult learners to improve their learning efficiency. So again, it's with the uh, different or various teaching methods and techniques that we can do this. So kahit hindi natin kaya, or sa tingin natin, na, uh, baka ma-overwhelm tayo sa mga activities pwede tayong magpa-group work muna or group activity para tulungan sila. Pwede rin tayong magpa-seminar from someone outside. So, there are so many things that we can do. So, if you want to know more um, specific training and training guides and techniques, I suggest you have a copy of this. It's uh, by UNESCO. 
Office Bangkok and Regional Bureau for Education in Asia and the Pacific. You can scan the QR code. You'll be redirected to this book. You may read it para alam nyo din kung paano nyo gagawin ang uh, classes nyo if you're gonna be a TM1. And this is not just applicable for test the courses. Even in college and high school, since starting from actually starting from elementary nga, meron na tayong TLE. But uh, sa high school, doon na kasi yung application. So we can also use this. So this is the nine events of instruction. Uh, this is the uh, flow chart and the goal for here is to transfer knowledge, skills, and attitude. So we are also teaching our learners how to learn and not just how to know. Kaya dito kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong uh, ayan, presentation, presenting information, eliciting performance, uh, providing feedback, assessing performance, and so on. So, besides dun sa uh, mga techniques and methods natin in teaching that we've learned from uh, our other subjects, pwede rin naman natin i-apply ito. Okay, so this is actually from Gagne. So, he designed this nine events of instruction. So, he proposed that an instructional design that follows a systematic approach is much better or uh, uh, effective. So, kailangan yung instructions natin ay systematic. Well, totoo nga naman. Nakakalito din kasi if, if an instruction is not that systematic. So, hindi natin maintindihan kung paano magsimula sa isang activity. So, use these learning events to produce engaging and minimum, meaningful sorry, instruction. Preparing Session Plan Understanding, Presentation, Practice, Feedback Presentation includes instructional materials and methods used in introducing the content which serves as the stimulus. Practice includes list of instruction sheets and self-check tests used by the learner to enhance one's competence and serves as the response of the learner. While feedback includes reference to the answer key, as well as the evaluation of trainees' performance, which serves as the reinforcement. To further ensure student center learning activities, use Gagne's nine events of instruction. Here is an example scenario. Motivate and gain the attention of the class by presenting a short video related to the topic. Relate the video to the topic and inform the class on the objectives of the lesson. Provide chance to test the prior knowledge using self-check form, drills, games, or other learning activity. Hand over CBLM to the student. Present the lesson by doing an actual skill demonstration, if necessary. Provide avenue for discussion to enable students actively reflect on new information. Allow the students practice the task to enhance one's skill. Trainer will provide immediate, concise, and constructive feedback to the student. Assess students' performance once the task is mastered. Assign homework for additional guided practice. Integrate these nine events of instruction in your session plan to produce engaging and meaningful instruction. Now that we have planned the, the topics, uh, we have assessed also the, the students, planned the topics, how we will go about it, the methodologies, and so on the uh, materials that we need now 
it's assessment time. So we need to plan the assessment. So this is Im assessment is employed as means of collecting evidence, evidences that would help determine the individual's achievement of competencies required in the workplace or training needs to develop the competencies required in the workplace. Institutional assessment. This is an assessment undertaken by the institution for its students to determine their achievement of the learning outcomes in the module of instructions in given unit of competency. So remember, we have two types of, of uh, two forms, I mean, of assessment, the formative and summative one. So this a formative, usually ito yung quizzes, seat works, uh, practical activities, but the summative, this is uh, the major exam or like a mid midterms and final exam. So assessment methods describe the approach that is used for collecting evidence required for are required to prove the competence of an individual while evidence gathering tool or assessment tool refers to both the instrument and instructions for gathering and interpreting evidence. So let's summarize everything. So first, prepare the following before writing a session plan. So summary of trainees needs. This is again from your uh, diagnostic exams or tests. Then session plan template. Um, I hope you have downloaded it. Write the learning outcome. Derive learning outcome from module of instruction. Ang module of instruction in as a CBC. So determine and organize learning content per learning outcome. So still, nandun pa rin yon sa module of instruction in the competency standard. List the required skills and knowledge and organize the content. Choose appropriate training methodology and techniques. So identify basis in selecting appropriate teaching methods and techniques. Determine training methods according to either learning activities, purpose, learning styles, or practice-based learning. Then determine activities for present practice feedback. You've remembered the video after uh, uh, the the Ganyes, um flow chart or flow of instruction. Okay, then you can also organize it according to Ganya's uh, instruction. Then identify or identifying various assessment methods to complete the assessment plan and review, of course, the, the written session plan. If effective ba talaga, baka marami naman bumaksak and it's because of the way you planned your session plan or you uh, perceive na ito pala yung effective pero when you demonstrated it, you use it in your class, hindi pala uh, effective. So next time, you can improve it. So again, please save a copy of the session plan template for your reference. It will help you a lot if you, will, you want to push TM1 uh, certification and other certifications also in TESTA. So thank you so much for watching this video lecture. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot and someday you you can uh, get your TM1 and other training certifications for you to become a competent uh, trainer and also an assessor. So next topic is about preparing instructional materials, assessment instruments, and organizing learning and teaching resources. So all of this are from the TESDA website and I've tried my best to research more or include other information in this uh, video lecture. So uh, once again, thank you and uh, please work on your uh, remaining activities and see you on our next video lecture.